So I'd like to introduce them. Ashley is over here, and she is, what sets her apart is she is a second generation homeschooler. Now, I don't know if you know what that means, but what it means is she was homeschooled, and now she is homeschooling her kids. So she's like my children that I've, some of them that I've graduated, she's their age. And so she is again homeschooling. So we are gonna start right now with Ashley and unschooling. All right, well, I'm here to talk to you about unschooling. Um, how many of you have heard of unschooling? Okay, cool, lots of people. How many would uh, consider yourself an unschooler or you're interested in unschooling? Curious about what it's about? Great. Well, if you are interested in learning about unschooling, you're in the right place because that's exactly what I'm about to talk about. So, um, like Barb said, I'm a second generation homeschooler and my husband and I knew that we always wanted to homeschool. We found out about unschooling somewhere along the way and it just kind of fit our family really naturally. Um, and so, I want to start with giving you a definition of what is unschooling. Now I could tell you my definition, but I thought it'd be more fun to ask my kids. So um, my, I asked my, my daughter, Arabelle, she is eight, almost nine, and this is what she said. She said, unschooling is basically a school where your kids can do whatever they want and learn from that. And this is a perfect definition because that's exactly what we do. It's all about child-led learning. We do what we want. Yes, I'm the crazy mom whose kids do whatever they want. And this is what unschooling is for us. So this is a picture of my family. We recently went on a month-long road trip, um, and this is at the Space Center in Florida. And so I want to show you a few pictures from our trip to illustrate some of the foundational guiding principles um, that we use to drive our unschooling and why this works. So the first one is that we learn what is relevant. We learn what is relevant. So this is a picture of my toddler. We, on our road trip, were going in and out of hotels. We were in the car a lot, doing a lot of things that we don't normally do and haven't done in her lifetime. And I was really amazed by how quickly she picked up on, this is what we're doing. This is what we do when we go into a hotel. This is how we unload our stuff. Um, she just very quickly learned, this is how we do this road trip thing. And this is what it means to learn what is relevant. This is what our kids are doing every day in their lives, is they're learning what matters. What do they need to know for the life that they live? What is the context for their life? They're very naturally going to pick up on those things because it's relevant and because it matters and it makes sense. So the second point is that curiosity and interest is enough. Curiosity and interest is enough to fuel their learning. This is a picture of us at a park that we stopped at. It was really beautiful. It had a, a river running through it and a bunch of trees. And as we were walking around, my five-year-old got really curious about something and she asked me a question. She asked, how do people find their way in the woods? How do hunters find their way back to their house? And I didn't know the answer to that. So when we got home, we looked up some YouTube videos. We watched some videos about how to use a compass, um, what to do when you don't have a compass. Um, it was really interesting, and, and I was excited to learn about it too. And the cool thing is, is we followed that interest until she was fulfilled with it. We follow her curiosity. And as we watched these videos, there was a point where she got what she needed to know. She got the information that she was curious about, and then it was done, and we moved on to something else. And so this curiosity that our kids have and the, the interest that they have fuels their learning, and that is what is going to help them um, pursue the things they would want to pursue and learn the things that are relevant to their life. So the third foundational belief that drives our unschooling is that we are capable of impossible things. So this is a picture of my eight-year-old Arabelle, 
and we were in this store in Kansas where they have a bunch of homemade products made by people local to Kansas. And it's really cool walking through this store because everything is made by somebody. And as we were walking around, my daughter had this sort of light bulb moment, realizing that all of this stuff was made by somebody. And it just sort of clicked in her mind where she realized all the things that we have, somebody made that. And I think the thing that was cool about this moment is not just that she realized that we have great human potential, that people are capable of doing really cool things, but that she is capable of doing really cool things. She is capable of doing impossible things. And this, I think, is one of the key components that drives our unschooling because there are going to be so many people in my kids' lives who are telling them who they should be, what they should do, what they're supposed to do with their life, what's possible, what's not possible. And if they can learn in their own way and in their own timing what is possible for them, that they can break the boundaries that other people put on them, then they can succeed in everything that they want to do in this life. And I want to encourage you with this too. I know there's a lot of new homeschoolers in here. And regardless of what style you come to use in your homeschooling, this is what you need to know, that you are capable of impossible things. You are capable of making homeschooling work for your family because it's relevant to you, because you care about it. Whatever the reasons you came to homeschooling, that is going to fuel you to succeed because you're interested in it, because you're curious about it, because you want to learn, because you want to succeed, because you want to do this together with your family, and you are capable of so much more than some of the people in your life might be telling you. So just to finish up, I wanted to show you a couple more pictures of what my family is up to right now. Uh, this is a little window into what unschooling looks like for us on the day-to-day. -day. My oldest daughter, Arabelle, is a really into gaming. She makes YouTube videos, and so that's what she's doing right now. Uh, my five-year-old, Clarette, is a fashion queen. She loves makeup and design, and it's so cool to see her do something that I have no clue about and, and learn from her. <laughs> Um, and then my toddler, Novadessa, is at that stage where she just wants to explore the world, find out what everything is about, and just follow her sisters around doing everything that they're doing. So this is me. My name is Ashley Newberg. I'm a peaceful parenting coach and an unschooling advocate. If you have any questions for me or you'd like to reach me, you can take a picture of the screen and uh, find my website or email me later. So that's a little bit about how we do unschooling.